The jump start system doesn't require casting, but it does require a close evaluation of fit, critical for getting the correct function. The jump start in particular depends on both the socks for comfort and the shoes for compression and protection of the toe shelf. So when fitting the jump starts, we initially try to seat the heel because that's our primary control is in fact to hold the heel down into the back of the brace. Then the second thing to look at is in fact length. The toe shelf will often be a little bit longer than the patient's foot, probably a half an inch, when with the heel seated the overall length is correct. If you're seeing the toes matching the end of the toe shelf, it's usually a case that the jump start is in fact too small. If you see more than half an inch, it is possible that the jump start is too big. If the edges of the instep area overlap when you've put it on the patient with a sock, the jump start is definitely too big or at least has too much volume. After looking at length with the heel seated, instep closure, I usually look to see if the forefoot of the patient is reasonably matching the width of the jump start. The forefoot control is very important for overall stability of the patient's foot. And if the jump start is in fact too wide through the forefoot, the patient's foot will tend to drift to one side or the other and upset the overall alignment. Lastly, I look at the overall conformity of the surfaces of the brace to the patient's foot. Be aware that the jump start will be compressed by the shoe, and so applying mild compression with your fingers to mimic the shoe can give you a better visual approximation of how the jump start is actually fitting. The jump start system was designed to fit feet that can be correctable to normal positions. Any significant errors in fit might need to be addressed by moving to a custom design.